One feature I'd love to see in Photoshop would be gradient brush strokes. Not certain how they would implement it. However, here's a sort of approach to creating a sort of gradient brush stroke, but just by using layers. Not ideal, it's not a really good solution, but it's a solution to create sort of this sort of colorful effect using gradients. Now I'm just gonna go back, go to my history and quickly get rid of all that and then start. First thing to do is create a layer. So go to a layer and a new layer. This is for the brush stroke. Now I'm just gonna use the standard brush tool. There's the brush tool there. And I'm gonna set the color to black. It's gonna be the set there. Now go to brushes, so window and brushes. And there's brushes. Now you've probably got general brushes, dry media brushes, all those sort of things. Well, I've also imported some other brushes. Got these diamond brushes from graphicextras.com. Now you'll notice they say 25. For some weird reason, when they're imported, you can import them via the, just right click and you go to import brushes. I've noticed quite a lot of brush sets now, even though the brushes were created maybe like 500 by 500 pixel size. For some weird reason, they seem to be imported as 25. <laughs> Very odd, quirky. And I've noticed that with lots of old ABR files, just seem to be set to 25. Well, what you can do, of course, you can set the size, and that's quite often what I do. Obviously up to something like 300, 400, and then just apply it. Now, to make a brush more interesting, what you can do, you've got brush settings. Now, quite often I just, so you start from a very basic brush, like this is this diamond brush, you know, it's all, it says 25, 25 for all. They are not 25, they are actually more than that. So I've set it up to 312. Many of the brushes from Graphic Extras, like a thousand or 2000. So what you're gonna then do, you can modify the spacing and you can create all kinds of different brushes. Now I'm gonna use an art pad and pen and I can apply a brush stroke then to this thing. So I can create that design, or I could use scattering. There's a whole heap of things. I could just go to say scattering, and maybe scatter it, and apply another set of brushes there. Now I'm not gonna do that, I'm just gonna keep this design here. Now, when you apply it to a layer, all you get is that brush stroke across that layer. So you've got that design. So if I created another, now I'll just go back again and just show again. It's the brush tool, but again, apply it slightly different, and you can see scattered across like that. That would be just applied to the layer. And if I go over to the over here to the move tool, you can see just that. Now, if you go over the edge, you've got this slight cutoff, which is probably a best thing to avoid the scattering. So I'm just going to undo that. And again, go back to the brush tool. And you of course could use other brushes. There are other brushes that could be used as well. A whole variety of mixer brush, etc. Pencil tool. Now I'm not gonna have any scatter, I'm just gonna have just a very basic brush like I had before, which I apply just to that layer. So it's just drawn across that layer. And now if I go to the move tool, you can see I can move that around. What I can also do, I can fill that with a gradient. But if I fill it with a gradient, I'm just gonna quickly do that just to show you. Just go over here, put the gradient tool, and I just apply it like that, and it fills, of course, the whole thing which you may or may not want. I don't particularly want that. What I want is just applied to that design. So how could I do that? Well, I always find the quickest way, and maybe it's not the best solution, maybe other people will have other ways of doing it. Please put in the comments if you have. Magic wand, just go to the magic wand tool, and I go for a point sample tolerance, I set to zero. I make certain I don't sample all layers, I don't want to do that. And I go for contiguous. And what I do, just click outside. So just that white space there. Because of course you might have created a whole heap of different other designs, I'm just gonna just select there. And now what you've got is all this area here is all being selected. This is the area that hasn't been touched by the brush. Or what you can do, you can go to select and you can inverse. So now what you can do, you've got this whole design has been selected. Now, in many ways, you don't have to do that. You could just go with select and load selection from the layer trend. But of course, you might have a more complex brush than this. This brush is very simple. But say you've got a brush with like an internal design in it. If you do that, you don't always get what you want, I think. So I think it's best just to use this approach. This is, so 
always use, well, you can of course use whatever you want to select it, but this is the approach I use, magic wand, and then invert it. So with that inverted now, you can see what I can do, I can go to the gradient, and I'm gonna use, could use linear, I could use blending modes, I could use difference, because then you can create more complex gradient. Now, it's a whole heap of gradients here. These are legacy default gradients there. Now, if you can't see those, what you need to do is go to Window and Gradients and go to the right side and go down to Legacy Gradients. Now, for some weird reason, Adobe and Photoshop, they default to a very odd set of gradients. You may want your old legacy ones in. Well, that's the way to do it. Just go there. So with that gradient selected, I'm using just the standard there and then simply just drag across. Now it doesn't follow the path, there's no feature of sort of making it follow that, that would be a lovely as well, but sadly that doesn't exist. And of course you can, with different set now, I can just apply it again. And you can create a very complex gradient design, and of course I could go the other way as well. And maybe a couple more times, there. So you've got a design there, now of course, you don't have to just go with that. You could apply effects to that. You could do a whole heap of other things. So that's the great thing about, now I know it's not exactly like applying with the brush stroke. It's never gonna be like that. Until Photoshop brings in a brush with gradient input feature, which would be lovely. That feature is not available. So uh, at this present, what you can do is now, I'm just gonna, uh, obviously it's a, a layer. I can deselect this. So select all and deselect. Now you've got your brush. That's your brush stroke. That's what you created with the brush, standard brush tool. And what you can do, you can then just hold down the alt or option key. And that's probably the quickest. You can of course also go to layer and duplicate layer, just as reasonable as well, but a bit slower. And then you can just duplicate it. Now, of course, what you can do, you can control it. Even better, possibly, is that you could actually turn around and say, go to layer and smart objects. So you can convert it to a smart object. And the reason for that is that you can resize and you can modify it in numerous ways. Now it's not ideal, you can see there's a little black line around that. You could get around that by using, when you're doing your selection, you could go to your select and then you could go for modify and just reduce the size of it just a little bit, just bring in a pixel or something. I never particularly worry about that, uh, Sam, because when you've applied it numerous times and apply effects to it, you can never see that black line. So just, now I've got that as a smart object. I'm just, I'm just gonna remove that so I can see. You can see there, smart object. Now I should have done that right start, so all of the others should have been smart objects as well. But however, I've started now with smart objects. So what I can do, I can just, move that around and also what I can do I can rotate it so you don't have to keep it just in the same position and also I can resize and that's the reason why I turned it into smart object now as a smart object what you can do smart object means you can resize it and you can bring it back to the normal size the same size as before without having to sort of worry about a destructive effect of transform and also what you can do you can add other effects to it you can go to layer and layer style Maybe bevel and emboss. You can change the size, you can see, you can create all kinds of different. And again, just continue to do that. And also what you do, go to filters, blur, and Gaussian blur. I want to do that, you can do slight blurring as well. Now you can't, unfortunately, apply additional brush strokes. So if you go over here, smudge tool, you won't be able to apply it. Now you can apply it to the other ones, standard layers, you can do. But if you've got it as a smart object, you can't do that unless you go into it and edit the actual smart object. So you have to double click into the smart object. So there you've got your design. And you can just fill this over and over again. Fill in design, design with your brushes. Now, again, it's not as ideal as having a brush that does this. And some applications have got this feature. It's not like a feature that's not available. You can add brushes that have got these sort of with gradient fills and so on and so on. So there are there are ways of and applications that do have this, but unfortunately, Photoshop doesn't. And you can obviously resize it to do it. And also, of course, you can apply various transforms, edit and transform and warp. 
and you can warp the design. Now, of course, you could ex stretch it too far, and then you end up with a not a great result. But it's up to you how far you stretch it. And again, of course, you can continue to work with that and say, ostensibly, a brush stroke still. And of course, once you've done that, you can, of course, go and create new brush strokes using, obviously, similar technique with the magic wand and selecting that. So that's colourful design, using brush strokes and using gradients in Photoshop. Now I'm using 221, but you can use 220, 219, etc. So if you've got earlier versions, as long as it's got smart objects and or if you're just happy to use just standard layers, you can do the same sort of thing. CS6 even, CS5. Obviously doesn't have smart objects, but uh, you can use the layers as like this. Well, hope you found this tutorial of interest. Please subscribe to the Graphic Extra channel. Always have new tutorials about Photoshop, about brushes, about Affinity Photo, Affinity Publisher, Illustrator, Critter, Painter, and many, many other applications. If you've got any comments, please let me know. What things did I do right? What things did I do wrong? If you've got any ideas about how a better approach to uh, doing maybe like selections, those sort of things, or how to do, you know, for brushes, please let me know. Always please add some comments, and then, uh, you know, I'll do another video about that. A dislike or like. Thank you much.